We not live yet. Uh, now it is. It's live. Keep singing Johnny Gill. Where's our countdown? My computer is running so slow. <laughs> so slow. Louise. Hey, say, put your uh, your screen on mute real quick. Everybody that is um, going live to their Instagrams, are you guys clicked in? Yeah. Okay. And mute your phone so that they don't hear the ding, 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 ding. Oh, no. I go through the uh, StreamYard thing. Cool thing. Are we live? Are we live? And we are yeah. counting down. How are these? Can you hear me, Sheldon? Yeah, just oh, see. your um, your camera is off. Oh, is it? Yes, it is. Bands that make her. And, and then Carmen oh, will like be the those. only person. Yeah, I would say Carmen will be the only person that can see you. I you like those, those, Carmen? Yeah, they actually. It looks like a less glare. Yeah, because they don't have that stuff on them. Got it. The other ones are like grown and sexy. <laughs> but then I made for Carmen Show. Let's go. Key Glock. Get your night gown on. Let your head sing low. I'm in a mood. Mm -hmm. You got to say, my, my, my. <laughs> Oh, I'm on air. I didn't even know. I didn't know y'all was in the video. I was making my own video. My, my, my. You sure sound fine tonight. You sure looks good tonight. Come All right. Yo, 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 what's up? It is your girl, Saint CJ, and this is the Insta News Break, and we have been on a break. <laughs> yeah, everybody got to take a break. The kids is on spring break. We took a two-week break. So, but anyway, <laughs> now we're back, and in the building tonight, I got Metro Men of Atlanta podcast host, Sheldon G. Horton. Ow. Okay, Nick Cannon with the turban on. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the creator and executive producer of Inside Atlanta, plus my fourth wall breaker producer, Carmen Simmons. Over here, now we got you and your props. It's gonna, we're gonna leave, we're gonna leave tonight. Gonna the leave last time was All right, Thanks. well, <laughs> we have a special guest, a uh, great co guest commentator, attorney James. L. Walker. And y'all, he been reading me my rights already. It's, it's just, it's real rude up in here. You know what I'm saying? It's motions <laughs> and overthrowing and I object and adjourn. I, I don't even know all this stuff. But he's here and he's about to weigh in on some of these hot topics that we got going on in in in, in the entertainment world, baby. Woo. Carmen, stage. It's a lot. It's a lot. Carmen, it's a lot. Stage. Stage, Carmen. Stage. It's a lot. Right, so welcome to the show. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we're about to, I'm about to break down these topics that we're about to talk about, okay? So tonight we are breaking down the latest hot topics, including Sean Diddy Combs named in new sexual assault case this time against, this time against his son, Christian Combs. Christian too young. This is crazy. Young Miami who was accused by the producer Rodney L. Lil Rod, Rodney Lil Rod Jones of being paid by Diddy for sex and smuggling drugs on his behalf. 
went viral after a photo of what appears to be the pair hugged up on a balcony with the caption Bobby and Whitney. Ray J and Princess Love filed for divorce for the fourth time. Maybe it'll stick. And then oh. Alicia Keys Hell's Kitchen. Mendici tells Yandy their marriage feels more like a business arrangement. Mm. Mm. This 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 a little deep. This a little we we came in hot. We came in hot and sweet. So to get this popped off and started, y'all ready? We ready. We ready. Th this one for you, Attorney Walker. This this your name, then Attorney Walker. Here we go. Sean Diddy Combs named as a co-defendant in a new lawsuit alleging that his son, Christian King Combs, sexually assaulted a woman working on a yacht chartered by his father. After the work, worker notified the captain about the assault the following morning, but she alleges that after Combs gave him a large amount of cash the same day, the captain failed to meaningfully investigate or take any action. The suit mentions there is audio and another worker interrupted the assault when they entered the room. How much trouble could both King Combs be in and how could this affect Diddy's other lawsuits? Well, let's deal with the first issue you alluded to with regards to the ship. When mm -hmm. she shared that information about the owner of the ship or the pilot of the ship, Captain, I think what she's insinuating or insisting upon is that they didn't do their duty to investigate right. So she's trying to, first of all, tie them to this party. Secondly, for Diddy, as the person who rented the boat or the ship, they're trying to get him with liability by saying, even though I might not have done something wrong, you're on premises that I control, that I rented, that I paid for. Therefore, to a certain uh, extent, I'm almost uh, indirectly involved because right. I, didn't, I didn't do what I was supposed to do to make it a safe environment. Now, to the young man, Christian King Combs, who, as we all know, lives his best life. If you just follow him on social media, he lives his best life. What she's essentially saying is, hey, I came on this ship. You showed up and basically touched me inappropriately, put your hands on a certain part of my body's and body, and your hand shouldn't have been there. And I asked you to stop, and you didn't stop. So I think it's problematic for Diddy because we have the other lawsuits. If this lawsuit was standing alone and we didn't have a homeland investigation, homeland security investigation going, we didn't have Little Rod suit going. We didn't have the suit uh, with the young lady out of Detroit going on. And we didn't have, of course, the big Cassie settlement that we all believe was in the high eight-figure millions settlement area. When you take this, cast it against all of that, it's just not good for Sean Combs, a.k.a. Puffy, a.k.a. Diddy, who I pray for all the time. We went to Howard together, and I just hate to see this come upon somebody that I've known since he was 18, 19, and we were both doing parties together at Howard, but it just seems like he has a propensity to find himself in these situations every five to 10 years, and I don't yeah. mean to know why. And now he's got his two sons fighting for their survival, and I really think the way this is going to play out is the white kid who got caught at the airport with the drugs last week in Miami, mm -hmm. going to take a fall here. I think the sons, they're going to work this down to misdemeanor probation or something. I don't think they'll do no hard time because three of the ladies have already said they were not sex workers, despite everything 50 Cent is posting every day about <laughs> sex workers. They've said they're not. So I think it's going to be hard unless, unless they have something on these tapes that Little Rod has. Little Rod <laughs> has tapes that show certain evidence. I don't know what the tapes say. He says there's audio according to all the articles we've read. If he has something that directly um, impugns Diddy's character or directly shows, you know, teenagers going across line or across state lines, now you got some issues. Now you have some, some, some problems. So let me ask you this. For how much evidence do they already have to have? in order to have Homeland Security Rating go department. and yeah. pull, up, pull, up, pull, up, pull up on you and knock on your door. Yeah, they, they have a lot. They For Homeland Security to pull up with that many officers and that many agents at his house in LA, Miami, and wherever else, they have something. You don't do that just 
on a phone call or an email or a text message. They have somebody cooperating with them. It might be Cassie's people because her lawyer has said several times we're, we will cooperate with the federal right. government and federal agents and federal agencies. So they have to have something um, to make them go investigate and do all of this. What's telling is that they haven't arrested anyone yet, that no one's right. been arrested. Now, the initial report said both Christian and Justin were arrested. Then later it was clarified they were just detained outside right. of the house while the agents raided every room of the houses. So right now, if you're Diddy, <laughs> he's probably quietly talking to some of the people who he thinks might be on these tapes and making sure that they <sighs> kind of, you know, Sheldon kind of changes his story. Sheldon was at the party, party with him. <laughs> Sheldon is a uh, Arab with a hat on, with a turban on. And he no longer <laughs> his style. He doesn't recall ever being at a Diddy party. He might have went one time, but he wasn't really there. It seemed like he was there. You know, there's a lot you can do with a billion dollars, right? So one thing I, I agree I with Fifty a... Cent on, Carmen. One thing I agree with Fifty Cent on. Uh -huh. Fifty Cent posted what I thought was the smartest post a month ago. He said, "Puffy has fu money." That, and that said a lot because what he really was saying is he has so much money that he can buy people off, pay people off. He can do a lot of stuff that the average rap artist can't do. Yeah, that's very, very true. It could be 20 women lined up. Puffy has Tiger Woods kind of money. Mm -hmm. you know? so yeah. Tiger was able to pay them 29 white girls off. Puffy can do I'm, something like that. I'm very conflicted in my feelings about this um this these cases against Diddy because you know Diddy has been literally the soundtrack to my entire teenage years from 14 to about 1920 it was all bad boy for me I I, I used to go to those Howard homecomings because I had cousins that went to Howard I actually met bad boy uh Diddy in 112 and Mace at a homecoming at Howard my cousin used to work for Uptown. I've been to those offices. It is very disheartening to me that these cases are pending against him. However, because I've been around for so long, I have heard some of these stories throughout the years, different versions of these type of stories from artists, from media, from people that work in the industry. And what's also disheartening is if some of these allegations are true, we have taken a very long time to do something about it. So my question is, on a legal note, we heard allegedly that when he returned that publishing to whichever artist that was willing to accept it, that it also came with an NDA. If mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. um, I guess the word may be deposed, if for some reason they are questioned, does that NBA protect Diddy from them talking? Or if mm -hmm. it's something illegal, will they still be able to say what they need to say? An NDA um, does not survive a criminal investigation. So if I sign an NDA, NDA with you that I won't talk about certain things, but then you do something criminal, and the criminal or federal authorities come out and say, hey, James, we need to ask you about so-and-so, so-and-so. You couldn't come after me in a civil lawsuit because criminally, I got I to disclose this. I have a duty to turn over information. That's why Cassie's lawyers are allowed to cooperate. Even though Cassie signed a settlement agreement that's probably prohibiting her from talking about certain things, if she gets a call from federal agency and they say, hey, is it true that three girls of high school age were riding in cars with you or flying across state right. lines with you and Diddy, she's going to have to cooperate. They're going to subpoena yeah. her. They're going to work in her room. Might even put her, right now, they <laughs> might have people sitting before a grand jury, hearing mm. testimony, and waiting for a grand jury to come out with an indictment against Diddy. Mm. Right. They might be stacking all the evidence. Because remember, they got them laptops out of his house, too, and they got a yeah. Yeah. And I don't know about you guys, I ain't breaking the laws, Brother Sheldon, but I don't want nobody going through my phone. There are times when you can't find you can't find something in your phone. It might be a picture of one of your relatives or one of your children. 
and you say, oh, I know I got that picture from the baseball game. And you start scrolling through and you go Listen, back. And go, play me 50 feet. And you go, oh, my God. <laughs> play me 50 feet. <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> when I'm scrolling through this one, please, please stand back. So you can imagine <laughs> what might be in Diddy's phone. And yeah. like you, Carmen, I go back to college with him. And in college, we would do these parties. So I was the guy doing all the Greek parties, Alphas, mm. Qs, Deltas, just dozens of them. And we were making so much money. And then Puff was doing all the New York parties where they were buck wild. There sometimes would be fights, right. never had enough security. And I would always sit him down and say, brother, man, you're very popular. <laughs> you're very light. Women want to come to your party because, you know, everybody want a roughneck. Got to have a right. roughneck. And you bring in that New York, Philly, Chicago element to your parties. My parties are the other hand, Greek parties, you know, right. you keep the Bernie brothers from their eagles blowing up and then wanting to fight cues against alphas. You keep them calm and keep a bunch of pretty women around and you don't have no problems. Right. right. But Diddy would have these parties where it would just be pandemonium because it was so hot, you know, it was so hot. But it's like he never caught that lesson of you got to have boundaries. You got to have some rules. You got to have security. You got to have some Sheldons in the room to keep everybody calm. Everybody can't be like pro you that they let you do everything you want to do. Right. You somebody in the room that's going to say, hey, James, yo, yo, this wine, this, these sangrias, these, you know, iced teas or whatever you're doing, it's too much. And the parties were like from Howard to the incident with Heavy D. And, and at the New York party at St. At St. John's, I believe. At St. John's, yeah. the, the J Lo thing with Shine. I, I was with him in court. I've never really talked about this before, but Terry Williams is aware. Terry Williams okay. would have me come to court with him because mm. he wanted moral support from Howard to be there. And who better to get than one of his classmates who has a clean slate, wins cases, has all these gospel artists? Like it was like the antithesis, you know? We're going to have you right. come, James in the courtroom, be there if the press asks questions. And he was scared as hell. During that trial, he was scared as hell. And my mentor, Johnny Cochran, got him off the hook. But he was scared. But he see, was here's, the, here's the thing about that case that's so interesting, because the victim from that case, she's never kept quiet. She's always kept talking. And now she just did an interview, I think it was with News Nation, um, where she's like, she wants the case reopened. Because she been saying that Puffy's the one that shot her. She told the doctor that Puffy shot her. Yeah. Like she told the police that Puffy shot her and nobody was listening. It's double so, jeopardy though. She can't, he's yeah. already been tried and um, found not it. Like OJ Simpson, rest in peace today. Um, mm. Which I will say for whatever you thought about OJ Simpson, he really exposed our criminal justice system, his case. Yeah. He put our system right. on trial and that's the best thing that his case did, but OJ couldn't be tried again criminally, nor could Puffy. As much as this lady might be telling the truth, you can't try him again. He's already been tried. Right. Mm. right. Interesting enough, um, I was looking at something the other day that actually said that people who are sexual enthusiasts, like they're trying to paint Diddy typically film things and they keep a long history of the different activities that they've been a part of. Um, so I'm almost positive. I, I cannot imagine how people really, really feel knowing what's in the, the media about him secretly recording, recording. everything. Like I can't imagine because there was a lot of people because the young man who we, uh, the I don't know what his nationality is. I know he's just not black. When he accidentally walked in the room and saw those high powered, uh, according to him, saw these high powered actors and dignitaries in this room having very intimate sessions with each other and Diddy. And right. he literally has gotten online and said that I'm, I'm gonna tell the whole world because he, because I heard him say years but, ago, but if no, I die, it's him. But Sheldon, let me say something. Let me say something. I've been wanting to say this on social media for a few weeks. I'm a heterosexual straight man. I love women. I love the finesse of women, the comfort mm -hmm. of women, just the holding of a woman. 
But I feel even with all of that, there's this undercurrent of homophobia that's driving a lot of this, you know, I saw Puffy doing this with a man. I saw this guy over here. Is Meek Mill gay? Is this one gay? Uh, you know, Will Smith and Dwayne Martin. And even if these men are living that life, mm -hmm. my thing, I wouldn't get down like that. I've been in the industry forever and people throw it your way and you keep it moving. But even if they are, that's their business. Like, yeah. But here's but 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 here's the thing. As an openly gay man, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I come from a, a different vantage point because at the same time, we do know that um of any culture, black men have the highest of toxicity Correct. when it comes to homosexuality. Correct. So my thing is not that, you know, because I'm okay with all of them doing it, to be honest. But, <laughs> you know, we ain't going to go there. But at the end of the day, <laughs> they are not okay. And as affirming as your, re your response sounded, the reality of it, these people could lose everything. Right. But, it's not, comes, least, but it's not a crime, I guess, is what I'm saying. Right. Absolutely not. Yeah. The but thrust, of, this, though, the thrust but, of these lawsuits is that these men are undercover DL gay. And they're doing these threesomes, foursomes, fivesomes with all these high power people. And it's so, you know, revolting and so just, oh, my God, you can't put it down when it comes across your screen. But is it a crime? It's not a crime. But watch this, though. The, the, the criminality of it is not for me, a, a, a gay man. It's not the problem. But my, my thing is, do they deserve to be exposed, though? That's my thing. No, they don't. They deserve. You get what I'm saying. So, yeah. so that that's why I can't imagine what they could be dealing with because sometimes even I feel like all of this is strategic. You tell me the. You tell me if you think different. Mm -hmm. Simply because this stuff has been online for a very long yeah. time. Who, I don't and, I don't care who's in your bed with you. I care that you treat people right. You respect women. You respect men. You respect our gay community. You respect our Christian community. You respect everybody. I don't need to know who you're sleeping with. I don't need to know who you have slept with. I don't need to know if you slept with one person, two people, or five people. I just need to know you're following the law. I would preferably hope you're not right. 19 year old girls if you're 35, 45, 55 year old men. Or older, we all saw this week with Russell Simmons' daughter. Sorry, um, Carmen, I know that's your cousin, but there was a lot of you know outrage. And and I'm a I'm in that old maybe fuddy duddy group that I just don't think you should be running with twenty year olds like that. And they've yeah. done it at you because you know you're wealthy, you're successful. That that comes with being wealthy and successful. You're gonna get that crew calling and DMing you. It's just the norm. But but my 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 thing was a little because I wasn't. I wasn't going to mention the sexuality part of it. It's just what what is causing this to move right now. Because a lot of this stuff has been online for at least over a decade. None of this has ever moved the pendulum. No one has ever come after Diddy for any of the things that seems to now be used as collateral and as, um, uh, not collateral, but as evidence. In cases now they want to use this. Now they want to reflect on this. Now they want to use the things that are happening online as leads. But it couldn't provoke anybody before now to be a just enough cause to come after Diddy because this stuff has been out there forever. I believe that there is another machine behind this, and this is a greater plot from the wrong people in the right places. Of course, I, I agree too. However, I think a lot of this would have never came out before just for the simple fact that we said many times when we had this conversation about this very topic is that no one would have believed them. It never would have gotten this far because of the things that have been set in stone in terms of Epstein and Weinstein and right. other people. That's because those things stuck now, this gave this a chance to actually stick. And Cassie being the first person to get her stuff out there. That's it right there. Now, of course, it's taken seriously. Because it's like, 
it's one thing for Jane Doe to say something. It's another thing for Cassie, who we know was to attend for so long, left, being still harassed to a certain degree in the public eye, and now she's like, no, nah, this is what this man did to me. And it's like, who? Oh. Not only really. did she file a suit against him, but he settled it immediately. Exactly. Immediately. Yeah, in record time. Exactly. Yeah. I think um Saint, I think CJ, you nailed it in terms of the Time's Up movement that my good friend uh Nina Shaw and company out in LA have started. She's a very high powered um entertainment lawyer in LA named Nina Shaw. The movement that they've started with the Time's Up movement and mm -hmm. of course the Me Too movement and all of this, I think um Weinstein, Cosby, mm -hmm. Epstein, now Puffstein. They've all just <laughs> right. fallen. That was just, good. Just, he just, that was it's good. just the worst hour for him. Like they, they, they got him. You know, and even we know Russell being in Bali, they were trying to do it to Russell, but Russell was smart. Russell got out of the country, laid quiet for a while, had a few explosions with his daughter, which I told him, like, come on, bro. This is not the way you want to handle that. But um, besides that, Russell was smart to get out of the country. And Diddy kind of believes, as he did at Howard, he's kind of always believed his own press. Like yeah. at Howard, we were both getting a lot of attention. I mean, he's in student newspaper. Because, I mean, we're college kids making 10 grand a week. Let's not get funny, you know? And then some weeks we were making 50 if we were doing big step shows. So you're 20, 21, you're two young men making that kind of money, like right. printing money. And Come through, did it. Like flashy, the bracelets, the rings, the cars. I was like scared to take the money to the bank because they told me if you put more than 10 grand in the bank, the IRS was going to come reported. to you. Mm -hmm. so I would be talking 9,900, 7,830, 8,260. And I go to Riggs Bank and the lady be like, what's with this random amount? And I was like, well, you know, I sent money to mom. You know, I got to pay my rent. I pay for school. But I was always like, we got to play this down. The right. most I brought was like a long leather chef like jacket one time. And walked across the campus with it because I thought like I deserved that after we did this big event off campus and 6,000 people came. But I was always low key. Diddy has always believed the hype. He has yeah. always been, James, we're going to make it. And then when he gets in trouble, he would come to me and say, let's pray. And then we would pray and we would, you know, we'd talk about it. He knew my grandfather was a minister. So I always kind of had that we can go party, we can be in the club, but I got to be in church on Sunday morning. Wow. I might, I might get in at 4 a.m., but I'm going to scroll to the church in the back row, 9 or 10 o'clock, you know, wiping my eyes, but I'm going to be there. And I wow. really believe that's what they discovered because it was like a lot of close calls. But he's always believed his hype. He's always believed it. And I think in this time's up, like CJ said, this is the time where you, you can't believe your hype. You got to really yeah. believe your hype. The media, your handlers, you got, you got to listen to somebody. And I've through intermediaries, I've sent word to him to find me so I can talk to him because there's a way out of this. This is what mm -hmm. I can tell you, show comment. There's a way yeah. out. You, you know what, though? And, and, and it's interesting. So, so now that we hear so many people talk about Diddy, I think what is happening, what happens is, and I'm just being the, the opposite advocate, because I hate the word mm -hmm. devil's advocate, but just being the opposite advocate. I think we're doing the same thing that white people do to offenders and, and lawbreakers of white people. How they claim, not us as in just us four, but I'm talking about the community. As much as we've heard, we know, we realize that this is going on and we have empathized with the people that have complained about so much. And then even if everything that the, the, the people about if they're saying this is true about all of the people that was in his orbit that are no longer with us mm -hmm. and he had allegedly had something to do with this it is unbelievable how some people are really rallying behind him in a cultural way like oh brother we 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 we, we root for this not to be Literally, if you are responsible for the things that you said, you are responsible for taking one of the most prolific rappers 
Mm -hmm. of the face of this earth way too early. Two of them, to be honest, because Notorious Big was going somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And who made, so even if the case, like, who made you God, well, bro? Like, you just, took so much away from him. But Sheldon, let's ask the question, why? CJ said Puff is going through this now because he's coming in the heels of Time's Up the Me Too movement. Why? Mm -hmm. right. On the flip side, to your point, Sheldon, the reason Black America is doing for him what you said, kind of enabling, kind of justifying, kind of pacifying, is because he's trying to hit a sentiment with us of they do this to all Black men. Right. They do this to all successful Black men. This is how they do us. There's these powers that want to bring me down because I'm a billionaire and I tried to own mm -hmm. Ciroc and I tried to own Diageo, and I tried to get my clothing line back and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. he's resonating with the chord that's in us, almost to the extent without going too far to the right or left, Fonnie Willis. Now, y'all know you can't be messing with a man on your job, but because she was a black woman, we all was like, oh, they taking that sister down, and it's it's so horrible. Da -da. Come on, y'all. That was anybody else, <laughs> a white woman. If it was me and Sheldon, and Sheldon was dating somebody at his job, and he's taking on Donald Trump, Y'all would all be calling him like Negro. Have you lost your mind? Carry <laughs> really? But there was all these black women that came out supporting Fonny the same way Diddy is trying to get us to support him. Where truthfully, Sheldon and I behind closed doors would say, "You made Cassie do what? You had her." Yeah. These people calling people on hotlines and porn lines and prostitute lines and all this escort stuff. Come on, man, really. It's it's like as much as he has built in terms of his legacy, I would, if it gotta go down, I just hate for it to go down like this. Like, I yeah. hate because, like, this is the stigma that's gonna be put on his legacy. When you, people mention Diddy now, oh, he was, he was trapping hoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. yeah, but part. with a with little homophobia, too. They yeah. say no, the guys are saying no Diddy. If a man compliments another man now, he's saying, it's no Diddy. Have you heard that, Sheldon? I have. Yeah, they have been using that a lot. That bothers me because now you're doing this toxic homophobia. You got to real quickly say, it's no gay. It's almost like when somebody say, well, you know, Carmen's gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's any, you know, right. like, like Over they got to. Over justifying. Yeah. So I just think if he's that, he's that, let him be. Um, but we can't justify what he did. I have more problems with the Cassie stuff. Than what males he likes in right. the industry. Me too. Right. With. right. I'm more fun with Cassie, too. Okay. young girl, and I'm sure there's a lot of other young girls that feel some kind of way about what was going on. But let's say this before we change the subject, Carmen. Us men who were in the industry then, silence equals condoning. If I'm running with Saint and I know what Sheldon's doing to Saint or one of my boys in the industry is doing to Saint CJ and I'm not checking for Saint or I'm not telling my boy, yo, man, you need to treat her better than that. That's a queen. Like, I see hey, how you talk to her. I see how you grab your heart. You grab her sometimes like, whoa. And we typically didn't do that in the music industry. We yeah. knew the men who were changing in women like rental cars. We yeah. knew who they were. We knew who they were. We knew the men who were, you know, sleeping with her and saying, hey, get her out here. I'm not calling her again. We knew these men. We knew for decades. Oh, I got something. And we just okay. condoned it because CJ, you, 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 you go, you can go first. And I'm, a, but I, I got something stuff. based upon what you just said, Journey I, I was, because I was about to switch. Just we talking about young ladies and what people are doing to young ladies. I was about to go to the next young lady. Okay, so but, 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 but I, I, I know, I know we need to switch up. But I, I want to say this right here. This is why you, what you're saying as a straight man coming from, you know what I'm saying, an openly gay man, I appreciate. This is the type of allegiance and brotherhood we need across the board, because to be perfectly honest, people, we, we're, we're, we're all black men, we're all black brothers. A lot of people talk about the gay, the LGBTQ, all that. I will march for a, I'm because I'm first a black man before I am anything Thank else. You. And if I walk out in the streets, the last thing that would be an indicator to the powers that be is that I'm gay because they're going to see first a black man. Exactly. Period. But here's the thing. The, 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 here, here is the problem with people accepting Diddy. 
um, in whoever he 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 um, has had sex with, um, male or female, because a lot of the men that have passed and been adjacent to the toxicity between black men and sat in toxic places concerning sexuality sought and, 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 and used their image of the same masculinity to navigate in this, you're not going to be forgiven by the brothers that were like, bro, I thought you was one of us. Because the first thing they're going to think is, nigga, you was fake. You're not real. It's this, and they will never go with it. And it's, and it's so crazy because I always say it is a lot of gay men that uh, that are not gay presenting in the industry we already know it the one thing about gay men we always around bad women that always tell you the secrets about their stuff that they do and the one thing about black women carmen and cj they got x-ray vision and the one thing they they do is they see bs a mile away when a woman say that she can't it's only because she is choosing something else other than the truth that she sees but a woman can see deception a mile away, whether she says anything about it or not. So wow. my thing is, we do wow. know that there's a lot of gay brothers in this right here. My thing is, if in fact you got, you can pass through, you can do your imitation of life. Think about it. It was a white woman. Mm-hmm. It was a black woman that mm-hmm. could pass a white, yep. a white woman, right? Yep. You are a gay man on the inside that could pass for a straight man. And, and, and instead of you sitting and, and being a bridge and using your power and your ability to be like, hey, man, don't handle that man like that. You know what I'm saying? He human just like we human. So when you know what I'm saying, you know, it don't matter. Like what was you, you screwing the man? Like instead of using your influence and power to get people to bridge the gap, now all y'all being exposed and you look like hypocrite. Right. You get what I'm saying? It, so, that's just my theory. <laughs> no, that's, yeah. that's good. That's that's good. Well, speaking of the women <laughs> that are all dealing with this case on one end of the spectrum or the other, and this one just happens to be on Diddy's side of the spectrum, <laughs> Young Miami began trending after a photo of what appears to be her paired up Hugged up on a balcony with the caption Bobby and Whitney and was posted by uh, Young Miami on her fence, the page, right? So Young Miami was named in one of the sexual assault cases filed against Diddy. The suit names her as an alleged sex worker and that she smuggles drugs on his behalf. In previous news, it was reported Diddy will, will no longer appear on Young Miami's upcoming reality show. Is being associated with Diddy damaging her brand at this point. If you were her attorney, uh, James, what would you tell it? Wow. Wow. CJ, where's she from? I mean, Carmen, where's she from? <laughs> she got the question. <laughs> I was like, that was good, CJ. Uh, yeah, I've never been tied, tongue-tied in an interview before. Um, <laughs> well, if I were her attorney, I would tell her, first of all, lay low and let the case play itself out. I would, I would delve into, let's go in my office conference room, close the door, and you tell me the truth. Let's go through this complaint, and I need you to tell me, are these allegations by Lil Rod Jones true? Because if they are, you will be subpoenaed. If you jump out here and make a big denial, and he's got you on tape or video or text message confirming his lawsuit, then you have a problem. Not from a criminal standpoint, but you have a problem from a survival of your career standpoint. I always start as the entertainment lawyer with, how do we make sure your career survives this? That's mm-hmm. where I start with. And I mean, right now, I don't think Carmen even knows this. I've done probably five very high profile divorces in the entertainment industry and two more just came in today that I'm working on. I'm always trying to navigate how do we manage. I'll tell Carmen off the record later. I ain't telling you something. You have portions, Simon, going on over there? Hey, CJ, I can't Just tell call me, call me, call me. I can't, um, I'll tell Carmen. But, <laughs> but my point is, if I'm young Miami's lawyer, I'm telling her, you got to tell me the truth. Right. Because what I can't have you do is get under oath in a deposition or on the stand 
and they have evidence that totally impeaches you saying, I'm not a sex worker. I'm not this. That never happened. We never had reasons. We never did this. We never flew young girls around. I never called phone lines to get Puffy more girls. You mm. can't be saying no, no, no to all those things. And then Rod has proof that you did. Mm. You got to come clean with me. So let's move to the next level. She comes clean with me and she says, well, you know, I did do some of those things. I, I did get some young girls from local college. I grabbed some sisters from the HBCU. I grabbed this. I did that. I got some drugs for Diddy. I got alcohol. Allegedly, I went and did this. Then I'm telling her, OK, I need you to go ghost. I need you ghost right now. I need you to go clean your page, do it all overnight, because then Sheldon will notice it and post something, or Carmen will notice it. So do a gradual removal of all the Diddy stuff, little by little. And then I would tell her, let's show you in the community doing some volunteer work. Let's get with Carmen. Let's go find some young girls that you can volunteer, mentor, and do some things like that, if this stuff is true. Right. And I think we're going to find out it's somewhere in the middle. Some of the stuff yeah. that Rod said is probably true. Some of it has been exaggerated for the sake of getting a civil suit because they thought, you know, hey, we filed this suit. Diddy's going to crap. Give us the money. Settle. Blah, blah, blah. That's probably what the lawyers are thinking. I don't know these guys, but they're probably thinking, you know, hey, you know, maybe we can settle this. I have had no conversation with them to even know. Because yeah. I was going to say, like, in a situation, they were in a relationship, right? And at the end of the day, did he pay like he weighs? So because he paid like he weigh, of course, why would he not give his girlfriend lump sums of money? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. hey, babe, go shopping. Or, hey, babe, this is just because. Like, I'm pretty sure there's no memo on the notes that said, like, hey, yeah, this was for February 5th. 2024 this event you know what i'm saying like those lines it, just getting what it seems like is that there are very fine lines and some of the things that might be in these cases could be true and some of them may not be but because some of it could be it's the could be's and the possibilities it, right. that's what doesn't need to be or what he would not want to be exposed but I think that um, in terms of young Miami, she probably should just keep it real low regardless and, yep. and not be seen or tied to anything involving Diddy and try to salvage her career without him during this time. If he ends up never being charged and everything goes away, that's something else. But right now, I think that she should continue to not comment on him, but also right. not post photos saying Bobby and Whitney. That just was not yeah. smart. What do, you, what do you think she was trying to say? Her and Puffy or Bobby and Whitney? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And that and, and, and everybody know that that was probably one of the biggest catastrophes most when visually the most, most toxic, toxic relationships, relationships ever like, yeah. full of full of drugs. Full of drugs. You know what I'm and I think that one of Diddy's biggest problems could be his arrogance because he has been in situations where he could have been in a lot of trouble. He could have been in jail, he could have lost his career, he could have lost everything, but he was able to maneuver his way out of those situations and come out as being presumably innocent. And because of that, I think he does things that taunt the people that feel like they're victims. Like even with Cassie, if, if Cassie was talking to him prior to filing her suit, then he should have settled with her before she actually filed it as they supposedly asked. But we, what right. we saw was Diddy on a, a um, award show mentioning her and thanking her for holding him down during a hard time and gazing into the camera. Would you cut it out? L leave that lady alone. She is married. Right. She has children. If, if, if this lady is pursuing you saying that I'm going to file a suit against you for the abuse that I experienced, you probably shouldn't be on an award show stage telling her thanks for holding me down during the dark time. Same thing with Little Rod. If Little Rod's biggest issue really is just that you didn't pay me, just pay him because I'm pretty sure whatever you're <laughs> supposed to pay him is way less than the trouble that you're going through right now. Way less. Well, 
full disclosure, um, Little Rob was a client of ours, and we stepped out of it when he decided, obviously, to do what he did in terms of suing Diddy. So I can't, I'm not at liberty to say much more, but I, I would say- That I says echo, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I echo your sentiments, Car Carmen, that if um, Diddy could have settled this, it would have been hopefully a better thing for him. Yeah. But um, I'm praying for Rod. I love him to death. And he's got a very strong litigation team that's helping him. And they're, they're relentless and they're good at what they do. And I just, I just wish him well. Before we get off that subject. Yeah, because I got a question. About... <laughs> I knew it was coming. CJ, thank you, CJ. Because you, you were going to let me get through this. I was about to get to the next one. <laughs> Go and love your way, Before... CJ, because you were going to help me. Before we get off of that, what do you think about the way that his attorney um, writes these, um, these cases? Because they read like, a novel and the complaints have been like it's it's you know it's it's too much for um, it's fiction. I, <laughs> yeah I support I support little rod and I think if if this is his when you've been through now I'm not speaking for little rob because obviously client confidentialities prohibit me from speaking directly in that but let's just generically say or generally say when you've been through what Cassie's been through what some of the other women have been through with Weinstein. I, I watched who is the woman that was in um, the movie with Wesley Snipes, Jungle Fever. Mm -hmm. Annabelle Scir Scirbella. Annabella mm -hmm. Scirbella. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. The white woman, the Italian woman who yes. played mm -hmm. the role with yeah. Wesley Snipes. Yeah. So yeah. when she testified in the Weinstein case on what Weinstein had done to her and the abuse she went through to get parts and the things he did, you know, for her to. I guess, excel in Hollywood. Um, so to your question, Carmen, when I read their lawsuits, I read it in the context of that pain she went through. Mm -hmm. And I have no judgment on how they share their pain, how they write their story, whether it sounds like a novel, whether some people say it sounds so um, tabloidish, sensationalized mm -hmm. like a tabloid. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it because I can't imagine what it would yeah. feel like to, to be exploited allegedly by a Diddy or Weinstein or Cosby. And it's a funny story with Cosby. I know y'all think, how does he have a story with Rod, with Diddy, with Cosby? But my life has kind of gone that way. When I was a student at, co at, at college at Howard, Cosby was on campus the day we shut Howard down. I don't know mm -hmm. if y'all remember in 90, the students took over the A building and we shut Howard down for about a week. And Cosby was our keynote speaker. And oh, wow. I was a journalist major and I was doing articles for the Washington Post, the Times, the local school newspaper. And me and Kelly Lynn Shoemate, Kelly Lynn, she's on Channel 8 in D.C., we found ourselves caught in the Fine Arts Building with all the commotion. They're trying to move Cosby, trying to get him out of Crampton Auditorium and shuffle him into the building next door. And they're trying to kick us out. And Kelly's a very pretty girl. And Cosby's like, no, 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 let them in. Let them in. So now y'all know. Fast forward to where we are now. I'm like, <laughs> so nice to Kelly. You pervert. No, I'm joking. Uh, Kelly, but, but he let us in the room. We got our interview. You know, we had the exclusive with him. And I'm not saying he did anything wrong in case my classmate is ever watching, because I'm very dear friends with her. But Cosby, um, you know, he, these you got 50 women saying a similar story. They can't yeah. all be lying. That's good. Yeah, exactly. So back to your question, Carmen, I don't have a problem with the sensationalization of these complaints or these press statements or these posts by Rod's attorneys or um, anybody else's attorney, Gloria Allred, um, my buddy from CNN, her daughter, who used to be on CNN with me, I can't think of her name, but she's Gloria Allred's daughter. She's a lawyer that does these kind of cases as well. I support all of them because I don't know the pain that these women are in and the pain they'll be in for the rest of their life. These women yeah. and young men, if if these men have been exploited, I, I don't I don't know what that's like. And is is I don't want to compare men to women, but society is I think more compassionate to women that have been abused to men, Sheldon. With men, it's kind of like, well, why you let Sheldon abuse you? Well, why? Yeah. You fight? Well, well, I wouldn't have had no man making me do this to get this job. Like it's it's always that toxicity with men yeah. that we're somehow wrong 
you know, I'm watching some of the comments about Rod on social media, and some of them are blaming him. Blaming him, yeah. A, a sensitivity and a compassion for him. Literally heard this conversation oh, two weeks ago in the locker room at LA Fitness. Literally, the verbatim. You, everything you're saying. I got a question, attorney of Walker. Do you think the suing part of Diddy um, and uh, let me ask this anyway. Okay, hypothetically, if we were dealing with another case and we had different parties involved, okay, we have a, we have a, a a a plaintiff and we have a defendant. Okay, said plaintiff in this case was dealing with some foolishness. Work with somebody. Da, 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 da. I worked with CJ and she abused me. Okay. In this case, you okay, in this case, is is the plaintiff wrong for suing? And if so, what would have been the better plan of action opposed to suing? I with Diddy, most of the people who have sued him from the stories I've read they were trying for quite a period of time to settle with him and to a, avoid putting him on blast. It yeah. sounds like Cassie was going at it for a while. Some yeah. of the others we know, we've read their, their postings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. their GoFundMes and stuff. So to your point, I'm never a lawyer that wants to just outright sue you. I want to try to work through it and see if we can sell it first. But if you can't, um, resolve it, you sometimes are left with no other recourse but to sue. And suing gets costly, it's time consuming, it, it's a lot if you're going through the whole discovery process, depositions, and all of that stuff. So nobody really wants that. Right. Okay, so so gotcha. So so you, when you say you stepped away at, at that particular juncture in this, um, so that was that was the reason why though, because you felt like the um the suing was presumptuous like uh, ahead of time or you you want you, you had a different kind of you getting into the conversation <laughs> no, i'm just trying to figure out no like seriously like i love like, that necklace i love your necklace thank you and That's this nice. and this beautiful necklace you know who might get something like this who our next person that is Ray J and Princess. The fact that they got the divorce for the fourth time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for turning that corner there. Ain't about to get our friend this far. Don't do that. Thank you. Thank you. So, call me at home. Sheldon, call me, call me at home sometime, Sheldon. <laughs> According to people.com, over a month after Princess filed for divorce from Ray J for the fourth time over the course of their relationship. The singer is asking for joint custody of their kids. Mm -hmm. That most that most of their assets be kept separate. Split several of their assets, including miscellaneous jewelry we were just talking about, yep. and other personal effects. And Ray J's earnings since the date of their separation. Mm -hmm. He did get that big check. That's right. So reportedly, Ray J's potential gains from selling Raycon shares. To fall between thirty-five to forty-five million, to possibly even upwards of eighty-five to one hundred million. Yeah. Would Princess Love be entitled to the recent Raycon gains from this sale? Yes, yes, she could be. Um, when I'm representing the wives in situations like this, I push for you know half of everything because they're marital. I argue that that's marital assets unless there's a prenup. When I did, this is public information, so I can say it. I did, I represented um, the husband in the Jill Scott case, and they had a prenuptial agreement. So when you have a prenuptial agreement, it obviously sets forth how everything goes. Right. But if there's no prenuptial agreement here, I'm going to argue on behalf of Princess that, yeah, I want half that $80 million. I think she definitely deserves it. In terms, yeah, me too. In yeah. terms of everything that they've been through and the you know, the wild Absolutely. wildness that his biggest claim to fame is one wish. Now, let right. me say this. Let me say this. If you're Ray J, why did you let it get here? Let's talk legal counsel. 
if you have $80 million, you go to this woman with $10 million and you say, look, I'm going to cut you a check for $10 million. We're going to do an uncontested divorce. I'm going to give you three hundred grand a year in spousal support, which is about 40, 30, 25, 30 grand a month, somewhere around there a month. Plus, I'll do something for the kids, keep them in private school. I'm going to make sure your lifestyle doesn't change. But I need you not to file nothing, post mm-hmm. nothing. We don't need a joint statement. We don't need to do none of that. Just whoosh, be quiet. Y'all right. notice when these white couples break up, a lot of times they don't do all We that. don't even know. Yeah. We don't even know. We don't even know. Besides Brad and Angelina and all their drama because they got 800 kids, they thought they were really black. I mean, I know he's cool and black women like him, but he's really going through a black divorce in some ways with all of the back and forth. But most of these relationships, they do it like Jennifer Aniston did when she broke up with Brad. It was kind of quiet. You look at some of the other ones. Uh, Kevin Costner just went through his. It's kind of quiet. You know, wife took a jab here and there, but for the most part, it was quiet. Only us, we do something where it's in all these magazines and it's like a real housewives of Hollywood kind of moment. And even those couples that I represent, I probably have seven clients on these real housewife shows. And I try to tell them like, if y'all break up, do it quiet, do it low key. Don't make it a spectacle because you got kids involved. Kids don't see that. You got families involved. You got girls. It's just, mm -mm. and they usually don't listen to me until until the fan has and when the fan has the ceiling, then it's like, okay, now I'm 800 an hour, Sheldon. Because you don't know, piss me yeah. off now. I was doing it for 300 an hour. Now I'm 800 an hour because now I got to really put my work in here. Go ahead, Miss uh, CJ. So I got a question. <laughs> Just kind of open the door for it. So if you were a part of the Portia Williams uh, Gubati and Simon Gubati, what, mm-hmm. if, what advice would you give them? If I was a part of, this if you were an attorney, the, the council, of oh, yes. Oh, I would give him this. I've done marriages, divorces where I've represented both sides. So you and Sheldon are getting a divorce. Sheldon has his millions. You have your millions. You're both social media influencers. He's a fraud. And I sit, <laughs> I sit down with the <laughs> both of you. I'm not even going to address that, Sheldon. I sit down with <laughs> both of you. And I say, there's two ways this could play out. Sheldon can go hire Lauren Wasser, as I think Ray J's wife has done. She hired the high power Hollywood lawyer. And CJ can go hire Kessler in Atlanta, another high power guy. And each of you can put down retainers of $35,000 to $40,000 to start with. And then we can run that tab up to $150 each as you go through a one year, two year battle, Simon and Portia. Or we can sit down in a room together with one lawyer. Pay him five or 10 grand, write up a settlement agreement, write up a parenting plan if there's a kid involved, write up an asset distribution breakdown, figure out what alimony is going to be, if any, figure out what the attorney's fees are going to be, if any, and we're done. And if there's one guy doing it, the attorney's fees is just one flat check to that guy or girl right. or woman. So I've done a lot of those kind of divorces where I'm able to convince the husband and wife, like, it's in your best interest to do it this way. And I've tried to do it for some of my housewives friends who shall rename nameless. But if you just look around who's going through divorces, not Portia and Simon, but there's someone yeah, through divorces. Let me know that you weren't handling the divorce because you would have been like, I am not inclined to sit here and actually, you know, speak on this whole situation. Like, I got my answer. But <laughs> I do want to know, with Simon going through what he's going through, the whole, like, you got to... The, the the United States denying him citizenship. Like, I guess this is my question with them. Mm-hmm. Is it, was it too long to be annulled? Um, no, it wasn't too long. Was it six months, a year? How long was it? Yeah, because annulments are with under was, 12 months, right? Yeah, how long was it? A total of like 18 months. But how long married? But I think I think it just got a year. I think, I think a year. But even an annulled or uncontested it gets the same effect. If you do uncontested, you can be done in sixty days or less. Uncontested basically means I send you a copy of my complaint. You agree to everything. You agree to be served via email or copy. We don't have to do the sheriff thing. You waive all of that. We give it to the judge. We tell the judge we've already agreed on everything. We got a separation agreement written up. We signed it. We keep it sealed. And we're out of court by June 1st. 
Right. Nobody gets to know anything. That's the smartest way to do this. And these celebrity um, actors, singers, actresses, Real Housewives, they don't understand. The guys who do family law full, full, full time, they want to take your money. They want right. you to walk in and put down 50 grand each because they're looking at it like, hey, well, what we got going on today? Oh, Carmen Simmons is following her divorce. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this one full throttle, James, for two years. We're going to hire guardian ad litems. We're going to hire experts. We're going to do discovery. We're going to take depositions. We're going to hire a forensics expert to go through our bank accounts. You're talking 100 grand each to the law yeah. firm. That it doesn't sense. sound like this is going to just go away with a uncontested divorce because Simon has been more active in the media since this entire thing started than he's yeah. ever been even wh while they were married and, and on television and with their shows. And now yeah. he has has asked that uh, is it truly that is that that records um, that produces Real Housewives of, of Atlanta? One of the production companies. He has he has said that he wants them to turn over certain information. To it sounds like he wants to try to silence how much of their story Portia talks about. He's he's talked about her bringing gunmen to the house. So it does not sound like Simon is going to. Um, close this out quietly and no. under the radar. No, it doesn't. Or he's trying to posture to bring her to the table. He might be mm -hmm. making private demands and she might be saying, no, I'm not giving you half my money or half the assets or whatever. whatever. So he's using social media almost to shake her down. Mm. Get her to the table. Like, do you want me? She better be careful. He might take her back to the village. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. I can't with her. I can't. Right. Her I can't. All right, James. So before you get out of here, we would love for you to share with our viewers the news about partner partnering with Alicia Keys, Hell's Kitchen, and the success of the MJ musical. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Um, so MJ, okay. I just I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and CJ for you you CJ, you know what I gotta thank you for involving Mr. Sheldon over here. So, trying to get me in trouble with clients and former clients. <laughs> um, and then talking about he a black man and he's for black man brotherhood and he's a black no, man. No, 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 no. Listen, you now I expect for you to do the intelligence to kick in and you get them in the way you need to. We black, <laughs> we can read between lines. <laughs> so MJ the musical is a very special part of, of um our operation now. I'm an investor and partner. Um, our company, Front Row Productions, Stephen Bird and Aaliyah Jones out of New York, brought me in probably three or four years ago and started telling me about Broadway. I had always represented entertainers. I had always done Mama, I Want to Sing, Tyler Perry stuff, David Talbert stuff, always either as a promoter slash producer or investor. But then they brought me over to Broadway and I did piano lesson with Candy Burris first. And we hit a home run with that. And that was just a small investment, but it was a lot of fun. Then MJ just fell in my lap. And MJ is just a gift that just keeps giving. It mm. sells out every night. Broadway, the American tour, we're in 50 cities. I think we're in Denver tonight. We did six weeks in LA, sold out. And LA is not a theater town at all. Wow. Mm -hmm. in LA, like That's Mike, great. Live and sold out six weeks. Then we went to San Francisco, then Utah, Denver, come to Tulsa, getting over to Detroit, DC in the summer. And, um, as a partner on the show, I'm just proud. I say, I say it's the grandchildren's retirement money. And we've added London to it. We have Germany coming, Australia coming. And the thing that's phenomenal about these plays, and I'll say it in this room, people don't realize like one play, one play alone like Hamilton is a behemoth. You're talking yeah. you know, just a billion dollar enterprise, really. And you don't really realize that, but they have Hamilton in 12 markets running mm -hmm. simultaneously. Wow. wow. Broadway, you can go on cruises and watch Hamilton. So we, we have MJ doing that. And then I'm also in Camelot, Sinatra the Musical in London, um, Cabaret. We opened Cabaret. I didn't even post this yet. So this is exclusive to you, Carmen. I okay. signed on Cabaret. Cabaret opens on New York next weekend as well. So I have both plays open in the same. Congratulations. Room. Cabaret and Congratulations. Alicia. Wow. And Alicia Keys fell in our lap because I think it was just um diversity i think 
Alicia wanted to make sure the team represented us. And I praise God for that, if I'm honest. I think Alicia wanted to make sure that everybody was involved, that we had a good group, a mixture of diverse folks involved behind the scenes. So I, I believe that's what it was. I don't know for sure, but I believe that's that's what my gut is telling me. But we're investors in that one, and we are in the first one on Broadway, so that as it expands, you kind of go with it wherever it goes from here. Um, if you get to London, that MJ London has Miles Frost playing the lead again, and he killed it on Broadway two years ago, won the Tony Award. Now he's over in London opening up our London cast while the Broadway cast is still running and the tour is still running. So when it's all said and done, by this fall, we hope to have six plays up on Broadway and two in London. That's amazing. That is amazing, brother. And if you need somebody to sweep the floor, I'm here. Hey. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to interview all hey, listen, serious, and all bro. Broadway shows. So. Come, on, come on, come on, come on. Opening parties next weekend in New York. Come on, come on up, Carmen. Wow. Let's Let's do the up, bro. Red carpet next weekend. I'm trying to figure out on Saturday how I'm going to be at Cabaret at four the show, the party, then get to Alicia for the show and the party. It's like a four to midnight kind of thing. I'm trying to figure out how I can right. be in both places. And oh, see wow. But um, Cabaret supposedly is a big deal in London. It has sold out mm. for years in London. It's called Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club. I have not seen it, but my partners said it was something that I should uh, be a part of, so I, you know, I joined the fray. That's what's up. Wow. Well, Super proud, especially meeting yeah, you for me the too. first time. I feel like you're this big brother now that I can call, and we're about to, you know, gossip about like little, um, like little legal stuff that will never come to light. But it was just me. <laughs> I won't get you in trouble. Thank you. I I did not get in trouble. Don't you do that? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't said much about the thing with Diddy because it kind of surprised me. I didn't see it coming, but you know, I don't disagree with it. That's how you feel, and. You choose to do that. I stand with you as a young man, but I stand with you. I, I want you to get healing. That, that's really my thing. I hope you get your legal recourse. I hope you get your money. But Carmen, you know me. I want to make sure you, the person, are taken care of because we can replace money. We can get money. We can lose money. But that thing about like when you're crushed, like some of these people who've worked around Diddy seem to be, or yeah. be, or Weinstein or any of the others we know, that breaks my heart. That how do you get that back? Right. Yeah. When that's taken from you, you know, and you've been vulnerable, you've been transparent, you've given yourself to this producer or this um, filmmaker or this film director or in Harvey Weinstein's case, the CEO with all this power, and you've come to him as a vulnerable woman, and he's just taken everything from you. Right. Yeah. You get how do you come over? I don't know how you heal from that. I mean, we cry when we catch our girl cheating or lying to us or doing something that's not right. We have a, a moment there, and that's not even nowhere near the level of what these women and men, young men, have been through. So that's what breaks my heart, Sheldon, to your question. That I hope these men and women can just find peace. I hope they get the money. Mm -hmm. Money makes it feel good. You can sleep better with five million in the bank. Even if you're kind of getting healed, you can still sleep better. And that's usually what motivates me when I'm suing somebody or I'm trying to fight for somebody, as Carmen knows. I know people sleep better when they get the money, but it yeah. still doesn't change the hurt. Because I can pay for the therapy. Yeah. Right. right. May recently <laughs> was on his um, podcast with Cameron, and he referred to this situation as reparations. And I know that, um, and I and I went to, um, college with me. Um, so I've been hearing different stories for a long time. And my question about about Mace, because his is not, his beef with him publicly has not been about any type of like, you know, sexual conduct, but more so about the money. What do you think it is that is in these contracts with his artists that they all have a similar story of not being paid what they believe that they should have been paid, whether it be their publishing or just whatever their their actual recording deal included. Like, why would all of them have such a similar story and no one learned from the last person? Well, let me answer that. When you start off as Diddy, you don't actually probably read the contract. 
Your lawyers tell you we signed a CJ. We got you covered, Puff. She signed in the bad boy. CJ signs. She goes triple platinum. Sheldon writes all the songs, but Puffy takes half the publishing on it. So it's Puffy and Sheldon on every song that CJ's singing. So right. now the two of them are mad because Sheldon knows he wrote all those songs, but he's given up half the copyright. CJ's mad because she knows the songs have gone double, triple, quadruple, whatever, platinum. And she's still struggling and having to sing every weekend to try to just keep her family up and take care of her mama and have a decent house in Brooklyn. So why is that? Because in these contracts, the way it's written is when CJ sells 3 million copies, she's supposed to make about 10 cents per copy. So if right. we just do basic math on 10 cents, that's like 300 grand. Right. But the problem for CJ is Puff spent 2 million, 3 million to make the album. And the, the album costs will be applied to her 300 grand, not the 20 million that the album made. If the album sold 3 million copies and the net take home to the label was $7 on a $14 jacket or $12 jacket, the album grossed about $21 million for that label. CJ supposed to get 300,000 because she gets 10 cents per copy sold. But her 10 cents, her royalty rate pays the whole budget, all the Grammy trips, all the clothes, everybody's salaries. So she comes out of that first 3 million selling triple platinum record, negative 2.7 million to bad boy. Diddy never read the contract. So he didn't really, really know you too. royalties, but he knew he was taken care of because his team said, yo, we got you. We got her in the standard agreement. She calls Diddy up. Yo, Puff, I'm broke. I ain't, you know, I ain't made no money. And he's like, you know, we're going we're gonna to advance you 100. We're going to advance you this. We're going to advance you that. She takes the advancement. She can go get her hair done, buy some more clothes. Sheldon takes the advancement on his publishing. But neither of them understand that they're just further in debt on that credit. Right. Diddy and that, is the debt for them. That's why all these artists are coming back because they've sold 100 million plus records between Biggie, Total, 112. Um, open Disclosure 112 is a client of mine. Um, they've sold all these records and you come back and realize like, wait, the label's made $100 million, but we all still, unre quote, unrecouped, still in debt. Right. So is there anger misdirected? Should it be more so at the parent company or distributor of Bad Boy and not actually Bad Boy? Or is it just no, a matter there, of there, everyone no. not reading their contract? The first album, I would say misdirected because Diddy may not have known. But by that second, third, fourth, fifth album, we five years in, we 10 years in, Diddy should know by now that, wait, Sheldon's not making any money. Right. My co-executive producers are not making any money. Stevie J shouldn't have to do 10 years of Real Housewife with all the hit records he has produced. Love, and yeah, loving him, Pop. Stevie J mm -hmm. should be worth $40 million for what he did for bad. All the bad boy hit men. Ron Lawrence, D. Dot, Stevie J, Hashim, all of them guys. I can't even think of all their names, but all of them should be worth 30, 40, 50 million dollars, just like Holland Dozier Holler, Holler, who did the work for Barry Gordy, all mm -hmm. the writers over at Philly International and stuff. These, these guys should have that kind of money. And, and like I said, I'm going to give you a pass on the first record because you could say, well, I, I didn't know your agreement only gave you 10 cents, CJ. But if I see us do a second record, and we go triple platinum and a third record and another one and another one. And CJ's still struggling and Sheldon's still struggling. And I'm worth now 200 mil. I'm just going to call everybody in the room. Just, literally at my law office, we call everybody in the room and we say, who owns a house? Who doesn't? Right. Own a house? Yeah. right now, we have 20 people out looking for houses. Some in the law firm, some in family. And our motto is we have to put the down payment down for your house. Because we're running this multi-million dollar operation now, but we couldn't be running it but for you. We don't right. have MJ without my assistant Anaya sending me contracts in LA to sign when MJ comes out and saying, hey, I got your contracts in today. Usual routine, boss. Print them out. Go through them. Send them to the lawyer. Make sure they're correct. Sign them for you. Yes, Anaya, get that done. So right, how right. do I get in a brand that's worth billions and millions of dollars? But my assistant, my assistant doesn't own a condo. How Damn. does I get in a brand? How do I win cases that are, you know, doing well for clients, but my paralegal doesn't have a car? Like that's right. got to be the mindset of 
a Puff, yeah. Dre, or whoever, Jay Z, whoever. Everybody on my team has to go up, starting right. with kids first because you're built by your family first, and mm -hmm. then rolling into your team in the office, your team in the law firm, your team at the Broadway play, your team in the real estate side. All mm -hmm. my teams, everybody knows his mentality is that we all have to win. He can't be the only millionaire when this is said and done. Yep. Right. So, so right. starting Monday, I'm going to be working at my new job at Attorney James L. Walker's. Uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Which you want you want to be with Broadway, you want to be real estate, you want to be the law firm, DC, Atlanta. Which where you want to be? I am a operations okay. person, so I help blanket. Okay. okay. Like, you know, a dibble dabble. Okay. <laughs> well, wherever you need me. She's she's laughing, Sheldon. She's laughing. Both of them laughing. I'm gonna have a Naya call both of them this week and be like, "So, Attorney Walker, we like your resume, right?" <laughs> oh, oh so, no, no, no. Because if you drop your tonight, I said it to you. Carmen already tell you. I done already checked stuff about working with you, and I ain't bullshit. <laughs> so no, nope. bro, I'm not bullshit. No, but but <laughs> I am a little Olivia Pope, to be honest with you. Except I'm not messing with the president. No, oh, yeah. I can't. Work. I can't work. I think I'll respond to that, Carmen. <laughs> to your point, Carmen, about who should they direct their energy at? It has to be the CEO. If Diddy's the CEO, and all of these artists from Mason down are saying the same thing, and you're yeah. a billionaire, come on, right. man! Let everybody. You're a billionaire. You could take yeah. three percent interest on your money and write all green. these five, ten million dollar checks and not even yeah. miss it. Not yeah, even he, he he recently posted that he his his a hundred percent of his publishing was signed over. His advance was twenty thousand. This was from starting with his first album. He said he offered Diddy two million dollars to have his publishing given back to mm. him. No, in it, because he know he gave him the twenty thousand dollar advance, and and Diddy said. No. no, and so he Do said, you know you've, how been, much you've been recouped. You know how much that publishing is worth? Oh, on Biggie alone, Biggie's publishing is probably worth about 70 to 100 million. Just Biggie's publishing. Mm -hmm. Because it's the life of the author plus 70 years, depending on the which copyright act. It's the life of the author for 70 years, sometimes life of the author for 95 years, depending on when the songs were written and all that stuff. But so Mace lives to be 100, you got another 50, 70 plus years to make money off that catalog. Mm -hmm. That's like you mm -hmm. go back. I was in LA with um, Kerry Gordy's my mentor in LA. His father's Barry Gordy. So you go look at Barry Gordy and Motown. Those songs were written in the 60s. And mm -hmm. here we are in 2024 still singing what? Baby, baby, baby. Right. Baby, baby. It's making right. money 60 years later. Wow, right. years later, that catalog is still worth two, three, four hundred million. Right, Six right. years later, and those guys died broke, but Motown people made money, right? So that's why he won't give Mace that catalog back for two million. To all of us, it sounds like Puff, you gave him 20,000, he's giving you two million back. What's the problem? Right. But again, it's that mindset of I want everybody to win, yeah. Like, I and yeah. I were having a this morning, she's kind of my right hand assistant, and I was like, Anaya, Zion done brought a house and put four tennis in it. He worked in my office three days. You've been here two years. What are we waiting for? And she's like, I know, Attorney Walker. I know, I know. I'm just doing this and I'm finishing law school. I'm getting this right with law school. You know, I'm like, sweetheart, I can't guarantee you this deal will be open five years from now. Like, you need to move right now. I but know that's right. Everybody, I understand everybody doesn't have that, but at least right. the staffers to know. This is the building where you walk in and you say, I found it. I need 30 grand. I need 20 grand. I need 10 grand. And somebody yeah. team is going to come to me and say, hey, Sheldon found a condo. He needs 20 to get in it. Can we wire the money? Can we advance the money? That way, everybody's going up. And I don't see that mentality in our music industry. Right. Or, we, or the whole, I cry. I'll say this and let it go, Carmen. I cried at Curtis Blow, Grandmaster Flash. Big Daddy Kane, Spoonie D, Marley Mall, that all of those guys are not just multi, 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 multi millionaires. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. yeah. we all know in the 80s what they did. 
to really keep hip hop a viable music option until it just broke through with Walk This Way by Run DMC. And then yeah. MC took it commercial and then, right. then Biggie, then Jay-Z. I, um, I worked in, in music publishing at Hitco Music Publishing with L.A. Reid. I'm, I've met countless writers and producers that didn't sign, that signed contracts and, and didn't know the business that they were in and have had hits on the radio and been at number one and sat in those offices with me and talked to me and told me about their experiences and didn't have any money. I've loaned money yeah. to hit writers and producers. So what advice would you have for anyone entering not just music industry, but the entertainment industry um, and, and when they're first getting in and they're getting contracts put in front of them? Hold on a second. I want to make sure I got your question right. Your question to me is what advice would I give um, anyone coming in the music industry? Yes, or entertainment overall. Regarding contracts, regarding? Yes, re regarding the contracts and uh, making sure that they are being valued or they're represented in what they're signing. I did a book for Random House called This Business of Urban Music. And there's a quote in the book that always stood out with me. A guy named Sean Garrett is out of Atlanta. I don't know him well. Sean, Sean was one of the writers at Hicko. I know, I know Sean. But something Sean said to me when I interviewed him about 10 years ago, he said, people have to inspect what they expect. Mm -hmm. And I took that and applied it across the board in my film deals, my Broadway deals, my real estate deals, my music deals, any deal I'm doing, I always say to clients, inspect what you expect. Tonight, um, I'm looking at nil deals for Raven Johnson. She won the game Monday night against Caitlyn. The Sunday, the black girl that deed up Caitlyn. I told her she was guarding Caitlyn like those brothers when you get out your car, Sheldon, and they're like, where you going? Where you going, man? She was guarding Caitlyn like, like no tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm looking at deals for her, and I'm inspecting what her parents expect. Mm-hmm because I want to make sure the agreement meets the expectations of the artist or the ball player or the whoever. So what Sean Garrett said to me was these kids sign these publishing deals, they got to inspect it better. Because if you don't look at it and analyze it and have your lawyer analyze it, it never meets your expectations. These people that signed with Bad Boy back in the day, nobody inspected the agreements. Nobody. They just were so happy to get a deal that they signed it with the expectation that they would be really, really rich. And really, really successful. Then later they go to my office and I inspect it and I say, well, your royalty rate's only eight cents. You would have to sell eight million records to just make a half million dollars. And then you still might be on the booth if he spends more than a half million making the record. So that would be my advice. Inspect what you expect so that the contract lives up to your expectations when it comes full circle and you're a successful actor, director, filmmaker, artist, singer, songwriter, whatever. On Broadway, same thing. Inspect what you expect. Yeah. I, it's, people think like even the smallest, like one page contract type situation. Like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I can just read through it. No, baby, you don't know what, you don't know legal jargon. No. Find, no. find someone. Find someone to look it over. I, I I became that person myself. Like even with Carmen, when we did um, when we were filming for the first time, and the con the one page contract, I was like, "What's this? What's this? What's this?" And it just I just got to a. I didn't have a lawyer to look over at the time. I had somebody that was legal savvy though to be able to go over with me, and they said. This is what this thing. This is what this thing. And I was like, oh, okay. Hey, Carmen, I need to uh, make a amend something. <laughs> Not even Ooh. using the right terminology, but at the same time, you got to know what you're getting yourself into. You know, yeah. you just trying to get in the industry, Carmen, and your lawyer tells you, hey, this is a bad deal, but you got to do it to get through this door. Then try to minimize the deal. So what we mm -hmm. do is we try to say, okay. Let's sign this contract, but let's put one sentence in here that says the following. In the event we go platinum, mm. or go, we come back to the table and renegotiate everything. Right. That yeah. one sentence yeah. undoes everything. 
it just mm-hmm. undoes everything that could be bad about that contract. So we, we yeah. try to tell clients, make sure you have some trigger language in there to reopen the conversation a year from now when you're triple platinum, quadruple platinum and all this other stuff. And it's unfortunate. We've heard this story from Motown to LA, LaFace to Diddy. Black artists mm-hmm. always say, but I didn't get paid. I sold right. millions of records for them and I didn't get paid. So at yeah. some point, when do we take care of our own? When do yeah. we make sure our own get paid? And then I'm the bad guy because I'm educating the artists. I'm telling them, let's go burn the building now if they won't do right. So then I'm the bad guy that all these record label heads are like, oh, we can't stand him because he's telling these artists, you know, rip up their contract or find some way to get out of it. What, well, what, you know what I, I think? tell everyone is that most of the time the contract that's being handed to you is written in the favor of the person that handed it Always. to you. And Always. so you have to do your due diligence and read it and whatever you don't understand, go get some understanding before you sign it. Because once you sign it, it is assumed that you know what you sign. And, and you're bound. And you're bound. Right. And sometimes those sometimes that does mean that you may not have that opportunity anymore. I've been in that position where I've had a, a television producer tell me what we're going to do in our face. 50-50, we shaking on it. Let's go do it. Start filming. And then in the middle of filming, receive a contract that does not say anything like what we discussed and we oh. just shook hands on. And when my attorney redlined it and gave it back and said, hey, we can either address these issues here or we could just start from fresh based on what you guys agreed on verbally. Well, that producer decided, I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> we just had an incident so, like that. As a young right. 24 year old, that first opportunity was taken away because I didn't agree to what was in the contract because it wasn't the same as what we talked about. So sometimes it does mean that you are forfeiting your opportunity, but I think in the long run, it may be worth it because who wants to have a hit song or a hit show and you're not getting any credit for it or you're not getting the money for it? Like somewhere it has to give. But if you don't read what you sign, then you're responsible for signing and not reading. Sheldon, I say to people all the time when they come in my office, I say, Sheldon, do you want fame or fortune? Tell me right now, because that tells me how to handle you. If you right. tell me you just want to be famous, then I call my friends at the Grammys. I call Carmen. I call my friend at the Jasmine brand. I call my friend at the Stellar Awards, and we make you famous. Now, if you tell me you want to make a fortune, then I start telling you, okay, these are the moves you got to let me make for you, and you might be a little unpopular as we twist their arm to get them to pay you what you're worth. We might have to walk away from a couple situations. We might have to cut off a few producers that you were really, really cool with because they want to own your masters and we can't have that. So we always ask that question. Do you want fame or do you want fortune? I I want that bread. You want the bread? (laughs) I want that bread, baby. Because I can't. (laughs) We all know people do do that money. All the people who do these housewife shows and they probably going to slap me for saying this tomorrow morning. So you can (laughs) y'all can air this in your stories. But many of my, look, I'm back, I'm backing up, CJ. I'm backing off it now. Many of my clients, we got rid of all, Sheldon. We used right. Many, many of my clients who do these housewives uh, shows, to me, they just want fame. They want fame. Because yeah. I don't see a lot of money coming out of it for any, many of them. Candy Burris is the only one I think that has done it brilliant. But she yeah. had, you know, a multi-million dollar publishing portfolio. She had right. other things going on. So, it didn't make her brand. It complimented her brand. And many of the people that go on these shows, I try to tell them, you got to use it for a period of time to build some other things and then walk away from it. It's not somewhere you want to sit for 14 seasons. Right. You, you know, that's interesting. That is so odd that you would say that. Because one of the other people that I feel like was on the cutting edge of, of doing right with influence was Nene. I don't know what went to her head because she stepped and she she was the first one in history to hit the numbers that she hit, you mm-hmm. know, as far as getting what she was paid and everything else. And you know what, though, interesting enough, another housewife literally told me that Nene told her that, bro, this had to be like in 2012, 2013. 
like Nene said the exact thing to her. Like she said, listen, you got 15 minutes of fame, uh, according to this other uh, housewife that, that told me that. And she said, you got 15 minutes of fame. She said, girl, it is your responsibility to make this your lifestyle. And I and, and then shortly after that, she got the shoe deal. Then she was out on the the other thing. And I was just like, oh my gosh, she's she's using her advice. I just couldn't, I just don't understand that where, where the breakdown was. Cause she literally had that mindset. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Nene, Nene was there. I don't I'm not she sure. Was. But she was there. But to me, Candy Burris is the is the smartest one I've seen ever do these. But she was smart before she got there. <laughs> but she was smart, right? But but her yeah. time, her and Todd together, that team, yeah. I love how they work together and give each other their respective space to be great in what they do respectively. And then how they come together, how they you don't hear no mess about them. Like they just, to me, do it the right way. Did we lose our? No. Well, I cannot wait until Monday morning because then I will decide if I want fame or fortune. Okay. I want fortune. And then we're going to know. I I want both. You want both? That's why I do this. Okay. So those contracts to be right <laughs> going forward. So you okay. But in the meantime, I will pay my due diligence by being a paralegal okay. for the phones. Okay. Come on down. We put you to work. Don't okay. go. Well, we'll I, I, I want to I wanna work on the... I, I definitely want to work on the entertainment portion of it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I want to do that. I want to be a part of your logistical team. We could put anything together. You know what I'm saying? I am at your service, my brother. You just let me know. I, I do have a background. Because I actually thought I was going to be a traveling background, pro, I mean, a play producer. I was once in one with uh, uh, LaShawn Pace Rose, and she was my aunt, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, that was my baby. Um, so LaShawn Le Pace Rose, but then too, I used to understudy um, David E. Talbert, um, some of the great ones, you know, that I have soundtracks from a plethora of different plays over the years to study. And I even have one actually with Mary Mary on it before they got popular wow. um, on, on a uh, soundtrack called Sneaky. So I used to understudy it and I used to buy DVDs all the time. Lucretia Campbell, God knows that baby hurt my heart when she died but all of that i honestly felt like that was going to be and i remember back in the late 1900s oh i sound so oh, antiquated wow. <laughs> in oh, the wow. late 1900s what are you talking like well, i'm only 39 cj so i don't know what he's talking about i was 14 <laughs> i was 14 you're 39. LaShawn, LaShawn <laughs> Pace so Rose. it's like <laughs> LaShawn Pace Rhodes literally told me, she said, be on the lookout for this, these plays. She said, because coming in the future, she said, these plays are going to be one of the biggest uh, propaganda tools mm. in the black community. LaShawn Pace Rhodes told me this maybe in 1998. Wow. And I'm okay. serious. Wow. Yeah. And so and I honestly, honestly believe that. And I think about that a lot of times because people are disarmed when they're being entertained. And I know we got to wrap it up, but yes, we, yes. <laughs> we have held attorney James Walker here so long. So we so appreciate long. you. Uh, yeah, it's been, please it's been, tell our viewers where to find you as well and how to find your place. Sure. Um, they can find me on social media. On Instagram, I am James Walker Jr. ESQ, James Walker Jr. ESQ on Instagram. I'm on Twitter as Attorney James Walker, and I'm on Facebook as Attorney James Walker Jr. And I'm kind of based now in New York, Atlanta, and D.C. because of what we're doing on the play side. I'm back and forth to New York. I have a place in Brooklyn that I stay at, um, and London, running back and forth to London. So I would say I'm Atlanta based, but we're in the process of trying to figure all of that out. So I'm just kind of going where God tells me to go and being obedient and letting submitting yourself to a team. That's the hardest part for us sometimes as black men, like letting a team say, we got this. We got travel, we got phone calls, we got scheduling, we got invoicing, we got the building covered. You don't need to come to Atlanta every three days. We can check on the building. Like that's been an, a mental adjustment. And when it works, you kind of realize they were right. Right. That's awesome. like, you know, like submit yourself 
and let them do what they do and hire the right brilliant people around you and you you can sleep at night. So I, I sleep while our plays are running. I get financial reports to let me show what they're doing and I don't have to, you know, be so hands on and I can hopefully play the piano or play golf when I get a minute. Right. That's awesome. But it's a pleasure meeting all of you. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Show. I hope y'all are syndicating this or doing something to get it out there. Carmen is, I just love, can I just say this lady here? I've worked <laughs> with her. I think I've only met you once, right? We have not met in person, James. We've, we've only been talking on the phone and computer for what? years. Yes, yes. I yes. thought I met That's- you. No, no. But Attorney Walker is my attorney, guys. He is A1. He won my case. <laughs> Thank you. Not done yet. We're not done yet. But yes, We're not she done came yet. to me. Dina Martel referred her to me. But it's been probably four or five years and I haven't met you. That's crazy. Right, because we it, it started over the pandemic. And that was a long time. And then I've been in and out of Atlanta. So, yeah. Well, I love I have to come to a play. Please do. Let me know. Go to London or New York. Both. London. Go to London. London. Now, Sheldon, I got to tell you this as a black man whose culture. So I got to London. They put me in the Mayfair Hotel. I love the Mayfair. Palace. And you couldn't tell me that I wasn't just. Get out of here, bro. I was just living (laughs) my best life, buying suits, buying shirts. You know, by the foot. I got there and I was like from Connecticut, like, hey, it's nice to be here. By that fifth day. I was like, Charlie, can you give me a cab? I think it's <laughs> Brixton. I want to go to church. Listen, He's cold switch like, on my whole, I called home. My mother was like, are you okay? I was like, I'm fine, Mom. She said, well, what's with this voice? And I was like, Mother, what are you doing, Mom? <laughs> Mom, what's wrong with you? I'm in England. I'm having a good time. But it just, you know, and I say this about your family. I posted this, Carmen. When your cousin went to London at 18 for the Live Aid tour, that's, and I was like two or three years younger than Joey. I was like, yeah, I got to get to London. Then I saw Luther live at Wembley. Luther did live. live. And those things like just stuck with me for years. Like I want to do something in London. I don't know what it is, but I just want to be a player in London. And to be there for eight days and they are like MJ mania over there. Every wow. restaurant to, I'm on the train, catching the train to the airport, a South African family sitting here. And I say, so you enjoy your stay here? And the mother's like, yeah, we got to see MJ the musical. And I was like, well, I'm oh, with the producer. It was wow. just that. That's the awesome. The entire week I was yeah. there, we were selling out every night. We did the red carpet. All of the royalty from London came out. The three kids came out. Michael's three kids came to the opening. Oh, wow. I'm standing there shaking their hands on the red carpet. And it just felt like, wow. But I remember when your cousin went with Run DMC and Live Aid. And I was like, yeah, boys from our neighborhood can go to That's awesome. And do this. That is awesome, brother. In in Brooklyn, um, Bridgeport, the Bronx, you know, where Queens and be on on the world stage over there. And it's nothing but white people in the audience. If I show you pictures of our show in London, it's probably 95% white, if not 98%. Wow. They love wow. it. They love every product. I know we- that's right. That's awesome, bro. So that is awesome. Building, you got a London, you have to stay at the Mayfair. It's a very beautiful hotel. I, love I will. It. Yeah, you I know. will. I, I will after after my boss get me over there on one of these two. <laughs> right, my right. new boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went up now. I gotta say this to the woman because I'm gonna post this. It's been in my heart to post it for three weeks. But the the I gotta get the courage, so maybe Sheldon can tell me how to do it. But I owe the woman a big apology, Sheldon, because I got over there, right? And I went, got my nails done. And I always do my nails, but I got over there, I got a facial, I got a massage, I got the nails done, I got the hair tease. Then this guy did some fire near my ear. They strike fire up near your ear and they do something to your ear over there. I was doing five hours of pampering. I was on my plate <laughs> with the carpet. And in that wow. moment, I said, this is what women go through every time we go out to something important. Like, it just hit me like, wow, this started at noon on um, last Wednesday. And I was still going at four 
with wow. Rachel. I ain't do the feet. I had got the pedicure before I left America. But I was like, darn, if I was doing the feet, I'd be here another hour. And it just, it just dawned on me like the whole like, process of getting yourself ready is it's, it's a whole thing. It's a thing. Which is yeah. what we do. Our, we do our, if we got to go somewhere, we get our nails done Monday. And Monday, right. nails and feet done. Tuesday, foundation of the hair. Not the curling of the hair and all that, but the, just the foundation, the new sew-in, the new wig, whatever, <laughs> new braids, fitting, it's the beats. It's the process. No, I, I did all of that. I had to get the ASCAT. Ascot I had never worn Ascot. I had to go get the Ascot. I and love that. The shirts, right? So I went to some fancy London clothing store and they're tapering me and measuring me. I had brought a nice suit and everything, but I just felt I needed a shirt. This white girl got me the shirt, put it together. And I said, man, is this what women go through? And I felt bad. Here's the apology, Sheldon. I felt bad because I recalled all the times I sat in the car like, what is taking her so long? What? How long is she going to be going? She's been getting her hair done for three hours. You got much hair done in the world. You welcome. How much? How many times you got to get her nails done? They look fine last night in bed. We why forgive she, you. Why she got to do her? Her face look fine to me. It's the same face. I'm gonna see it tomorrow morning. But boy, they did the facial so good. When I got back to the Mayfair, CJ, I, I had to take a shower, get ready. But I'm in the shower like nah, I don't want the water to hit the face. <laughs> That's how you got yeah. her. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. I was like, what is going on here in London? That is crazy. But I, I gotta write the apology to the woman on social media for all the times I've said, How come it take her so long to get her nails done? How come she got to get her facial done? I loved you when I married you, or when I started dating you. Why you gotta do your face different this weekend? Like all of that. I'm, all those things we said. Why is she always late? And then I'm late to the red carpet. My team is waiting down at the desk for me. Like we told you, we want to leave at five thirty. Now it's about quarter to six. Now you gonna make us late to open at night? Oh, right. Well, I'm, wow. I'm a professional hairstylist and makeup artist, so I, I'm 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 in the fight with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, all that to say, I apologize, Carmen. <laughs> On behalf of all black women, I want to apologize. All black men to a black woman. I want to apologize to each of you because I London has taught me a different respect for I love that all of this that y'all love that. Yeah. Make sure we just flip this out, you know, this 10 seconds and clip yes. it out now and be like <laughs> apologies to all black women. It's a whole different, yeah. I'm telling you. So and then I felt more confident on the carpet. That was the end of it. Like I walked the red carpet feeling like I'm clean, my nails are done, my ears are clean with fire, whatever he did. My facial skin looks right. Like I felt a whole different energy. They're like, I'm trying to walk her this way. You're like, this right. Way. <laughs> right here, right here. Is that oh, oh, I'll send you the pictures. Go, go look at yeah. the pictures on the red carpet. I'm trying to be Michael. I'm looking for this guy like Michael. That is I love awesome. It. So wow. thank you all. This has been great. Carmen, I'll be in touch with you. Sheldon Absolutely. and CJ, it's nice to meet you. Both. Absolutely. Nice to meet you as well. And, and we, we appreciate you. Um, wonderful blessings to everything that you are doing. It is so good to hear skin folk mm. doing good. Mm. And, th and then all, also the selflessness that you display with everyone that's in your village, I mm. think is, is probably one of the, the, the best things you could have said this mm. entire night. You know, being the willingness to share with those around you. So, thank you so much for being a great example, um, even to those who are following you. Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. that. Appreciate thank you saying you. that. Yeah. Absolutely. CJ, my new buddy. So, bye, CJ. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you click off? We got one more thing to talk about. I'm all right. Go. I'm going to click off. How do I click off? Do I just, here, all right, I see it. <laughs> All right, so that was very informative. We needed that because all these that was. things coming up and stuff like that, you know, we need some insight and guidance. But this last thing that we have to talk about, did y'all watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the latest episode? No. No. Yeah. I'm going to need you to get more in tune with this Miss Cleo hat. I don't know. like that bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we get into that, we do need to go to a quick break. 
Okay. Yeah. Break it on down now. We'll be back. One All right, second. so we back. Got my plush beauty. <laughs> Yay. I still ain't got that. You know, it's fine. Oh. One day, I'm going to be a part of the plush beauty crew. You know. <laughs> yeah, so. that was cute, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> Please spray. Okay. All right. So, love the hip hop Atlanta. Ciao. Okay. During a recent episode, the last episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Love and Hip Hop stars Yandy Smith Harris and her husband Mendeece opened up about turbulence in their marriage. Mendeece, who went up to who went to prison for four years on drug trafficking charges, in the beginning of their marriage, expressed his commitment is keeping him in his commitment is what's keeping him in his marriage more than love. Yandy makes decisions without him. Without his input, his wife, he feels that his wife is so busy, she's neglecting her marital duties, and they are just in a dark place. After being a single parent and remaining married for four years while Mendices was in prison, should he give her space to do everything she wants, or should Yandy slow things down? What y'all think? Where y'all go? Oh, okay. I think that We've been seeing a slow, slow progression of issues arising with Yandy and Mendici, which it's really sad to me because Yandy did stay with him for four years while he was in prison. And it, she probably had to put a lot of things career-wise and personally on hold so that she could essentially act as a single parent even though she was married because he was in prison but to Mendeece's um defense just because he's home doesn't mean completely like neglect the fact that you are married like maybe there needs to be a discussion about how how they can come to a healthy balance because I would hate to see them break up after going through everything that they've been through. Right. I agree. Sheldon, what do you think about that? <laughs> Don't know much about their relationship. You know, I do see different things. Um, I just I just see different things. And the, the one thing that I do see, one, like, <laughs> the whole disrespect with his mom, and her is super crazy. Um, well, it's okay, super so, crazy. So the 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 smaller of the backstory with them is just like they were together for a long time. Then now, okay, so watch this before you go back too far. I do know about her holding him down when he was in prison. Right. I do know about that. Okay, right. So so like they were together for a long time. They got married. Once they got married, as soon as they got married, he turned himself in. So now she's handling everything in terms of the household of the kids that they have. Because they had kids at the time, right? Yeah. Before she, okay. I saw it or something, right? Before he went in, <laughs> they had kids. And then um, also having to do a blended family pretty much without him. Mm -hmm. And holding it all down. When he comes home, now it's supposed to be a family unit, but it's also a point where it seems like she's on this, you here, now you deal with it, while I go ahead and kick off everything I was trying to do that I had on hold while you were inside and I was keeping a roof over our head. Now, from a man's point of view, I'm sweeping the floors for you. Like, I'm sweeping the floors for you. 
you know what I'm saying? I'm good with numbers. Let me get in, you know what I'm saying, on this. Let me be executive oversight with these numbers. You trust me, you my baby. Let me see what's going on over here. If it's logistics set up, if it's me wor even working with the crews of the people to be sure you're built, I'm in. I mean, because that's my mindset. Like, for one, I know you have held it down for me. So I'm wherever you needed me. What you was going to say? But is there an expiration on that? To where it gets to a point where you guys actually still come back together as a, a, a unit. Because when DC is saying that he doesn't feel like this is a marriage. Because she held him down, because she was there during his lowest time, the commitment that he made to her is what's holding him there and no longer a love for their like relationship. So it's uh he feels it's more of a business arrangement than it is a marriage. So with that being said, yes, he's there to be there with her 10 toes down, but at the same time, do you continue to stay there 10 toes down with no expiration date or is there an expiration date because you did this now I'm here. You get this time, but at some point in time, when did when is that cut off? That when when is the cut off? Okay, so my thing is this right here. There's always I, I think what needs to happen is if we threw everything at the, because my first comment was throwing everything in one basket, and mm -hmm. that's mentally I'm not trying to leave. I am trying to show you thank you in the best possible way that I can. And that is jumping on everything that you're doing and helping you build. And hopefully, because my mind is, I'm getting stakes out of this as well. So as you're building, I am too. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So right. even if you was doing a, a restaurant, you know what I'm saying? Oh, let me see. Can I do a whole promotion situation? You got restaurants. So now when we, we try this in Atlanta. Then the next move, you know what I'm saying? We're doing this somewhere else and we're traveling. We're creating something where I'm getting in on the money. Yes. But at the, I think what happens now is it needs to be separated because I'm the type of person, I don't make enemies out of my ex. You don't never know who you you going to need. Now, if you ain't do nothing foul, you hurt me or you tried to mess me up, bruh, we just didn't work as this. Don't mean we won't work as something else. And so my thing is, they already have the trust factor. You know what I'm saying? He know that she'll hold him down. You know, to him, she probably never did nothing crazy to him. Okay, I tell you what, the love part of this ain't working. But we getting this bad. So let's sit down to the table and let's see what part of our relationship needs to be reassessed, readjusted, so we can continue because at the end of the day, I don't give a damn. We still got a child that needs things. I and if we can work together as parents, why not? We just I, don't have to be together. I think the thing that bothered me the most is it's like, as you, if you were to watch the clip and the conversation that they're having, Mendici is like pleading almost, like begging, like, we need to fix this. I I never I never saw a point where we would not be forever. But now it's like he he was she was like, well, what do you want me to do? He goes, I need you to be present here in this marriage. Like I get that you're doing this and you're doing that. You're making decisions on your own and not even like having a conversation with me. Not to say like. It's the permission that needs to be granted. But at the end of the day, when you when you are in a marriage, it's supposed to be like it's a partnership. You're supposed to discuss things. Yeah. You're not just to go and do things. It sounds you know? like she's she's still working in the capacity of when he wasn't there and she did exactly. make the, the decisions and whether he agreed with them or not because she was the one who was present in the lives of their children or had to go out and work, regardless of what anybody else says, she has to make the final decision. And it sounds like she, she may still be She's working still in that capacity. And when you work with your mate, sometimes the lines get crossed, even in 
which conversation that you're in. Like, are we having a conversation as husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend or are, or are we having a business conversation? And right. if she's moving from the viewpoint of I make the end all be all decision in both capacities for a man, I can see how that can be a problem. And it's obviously, it sounds like they work very well as business partners, but you don't want your spouse to only see you as a business partner. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, because, like, very rare do we hear even um, Black men just publicly say, like, let's go get therapy. Let's go get help. And that's what he said. He goes, we need help. Yeah. And she's like, well, what do you think we need help on? And it's like, hold on. No, this man just opened up a whole nother window of vulnerability to say, hey, in the presence of however many viewers loving hip hop has to say, we need help. We need another party to come in and help. And your answer is, so... What 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 you think? Like why yeah. why you feel that way? Type like her energy about it in my opinion was just complete. Even in the storyline that they presented before we got here with her wanting to give her cousin her egg and right. him feeling so strongly against it, but even in her hearing that it didn't sound like it was gonna change her decision. She was just kind of like we're going to have to figure out what you need to do in order to get comfortable with this because right. this is what I'm doing. And yeah. I, I found yeah. that difficult to listen to because or to watch because at the end of the day, we you're talking to your husband and yes, it's your body, but he's your husband and you're talking about giving an egg to someone else, which means that I would think you would want your husband to also be in agreement with before you made a decision like that. We're talking about bringing a life into the world. And even though your cousin would be raising it, it came from you and he's your husband. I don't know. It, it's Like he said, he said, what are the kids supposed to think? That's their brother or sister over there? Like, right. Like, this is my cousin brother. <laughs> Yeah, it's my yeah, but but I, I I think that's more mental than any in anything else. I I do think that it does raise great questions from Mendezi. Great questions because he because he's right. And then from from a man, it almost feels like somebody else is having my child because we are one. When you marry, you do become one, and you know what I'm saying because now they're each other's body spiritually so you're really taking an egg out of my body and giving it to somebody else the truth you know what i'm saying the, the the truth is so I, I i do think that 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 can be super weird but i mean look what we found out about somebody that we uh that what they told us about them getting a child and their brother went upstairs and dumped it in or whatever and gave it to their wife like literally you know and the wife became pregnant. So the daughter is essentially the niece. But the 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 the, the wife is the wife. So and what I'm saying with this Okay, say, hold on. Wait, go ahead. I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna help back. you out. All right. Say okay, say me so and this? Carmen. Me and Carmen are married, right? Okay. You're my sister. Okay. Okay, no, let's let's switch it around because it's a lesbian couple. You and Carmen together. Okay. Car Carmen is hey, my no. sister. <laughs> a mess. So Carmen is my sister. Okay. I already discussed with you when I have a baby because when she already discussed with me when she has a baby that she wants me to be the donor. Okay. You're my best friend and my sister. I love you. Fuck yes. Okay. So she marries you. I literally go upstairs, ejaculate, and give it to you, and you become pregnant. Y'all married. So you carried the baby, but it's actually my seed because Carmen is my biological sister. 
You get what I'm saying? Carmen wanted a, a baby with her own DNA. Tattoo exactly. Her. And I get, but the thing that now, there's nothing wrong with that. However, the question is that when Carmen, me and Carmen came together and we talked about having a baby, that me and Carmen agreed. Carmen said, if we have a kid, I want my brother's uh, seed to fertilize, to be like the father for the baby, the donor, the father donor for the baby. And if I say no, I don't want that. And Carmen's like, yes, that's what's going to happen. No. Hell but no, no. But that, that, because that's I'm, your body. No, but what I'm saying is it's like that's the conversation that Mendici and Yandy are having. It's like you and Carmen already had this conversation and you both you you said I'm down for it. Yeah, you you want a kid? Of course I will be the uh donor for your uh for you to be able to have a kid mm -hmm. with your partner. And then now I come along and I'm like we're saying me and Carmen said we want a kid. And then Carmen's like, great, it's gonna be my brother. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's an agreement thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's nah. such a major decision that I, I really is. Is major. should agree. And if you can't oh, come to an agreement, then you can't do it. Yeah, the agreement, the stronger. Agree the stronger agreement can be between one person Me and, and Carmen. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Which in the You're case right. of Yandy and her cousin, they already agreed this is what they're gonna do. And it's kind of like, oh, Mendici, you gotta get over it. And I'm just like, She's out of bounds. How does your husband have to get over it? Right. Oh, yeah, the cousin right. need to get over it. The, the cousin the plan have to get over it. <laughs> it was funny because when they was in, when they was in the meeting with the doctor and the doctor was explaining to me, DC goes, "So can you put the egg that look less like <laughs> that look less like like?" <laughs> the doctor was like, "No, <laughs> I can't do that." <laughs> But you know what, though, quite honestly, when I saw the video, the FaceTime video, mm -hmm. Between it's now. Some, listen, I don't even watch Love and Hip Hop. Right. But this is on some real brother shit. The look in his eyes, he he's done. done. That baby done. That's what it looks like. He is done. When I looked at that, and I don't even watch Love and Hip Hop, I don't know who Mendeezy is. That brother is done. And, done. and and all this right here was like, oh, what the fuck am I going to do, girl? Because you really ain't hearing me. Like, I don't want this anymore. Mm. And, right. and and it's, nothing is worse than feeling like you don't want that shit and you're bound by obligation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, I'm going to keep watching even though you're not watching, children. Please, weird. please keep watching because you know what though. To be perfectly honest, I used to. Shayla used to be my my. I used to get what? my fix Who? through her. Who? Yeah, my bad. Oh. I used to get my fix through her. But <laughs> I got. I listen. What? I lean on you a lot because you watch that. So I do. I do lean on you a lot to tell me this stuff. I do. I got you. I, got you. I don't know. I don't know what he was just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I listen. I be forgetting about that shit. You know, because I'm the peacemaker. I'm the peacemaker. Yeah, I, that's so <laughs> No, I'm dead ass. Carmen will tell you. Because I done got threatened to get kicked out of plenty of rooms. They'd be like, look, bitch, when this shit start, you need to get your ass out. You can't be, <laughs> don't be playing. <laughs> Carmen and I already gave me the rules. Get your I ass mean, out. I'm good. I'm good at playing. <laughs> All right. Gave so, me the rules. This week on Hot Topics, Got real hot and juicy and spicy, and it got a lot of. We got a lot of answers to a lot of questions that we've been having for over for the past like few weeks, even months. Right. And yeah. a lot of this legal stuff has started, so yeah. I was really excited about that. But baby, I just feel like I just feel like something else about to pop off. I don't know what it is, but guess what? When it do, we're gonna be talking about it next week. That's okay. right. Those great hot topics. So, Sheldon, thank you for taking your time out tonight. You and your Nick Cannon 
Uh, listen, <laughs> listen y'all gonna love on me with this turban. Yeah, is that what is that? That's your turban. Yeah, Nick Cannon's turban. turban. Okay, just don't have as many babies as him. And Carmen, the Carmen, fourth wall. Thank you for bringing <laughs> me with your presence. I love it when you're on here, so I'm not having to sit here and call you out. <laughs> From behind the curtain. Right. From behind the curtain. So no, nah, but y'all, we should go to London. So we're going to London to see CJ the musical. I mean MJ the musical. CJ the musical. I like that. I would love CJ to see the that. musical. And I would like to see uh Alicia Keys House Kitchen in New York City. So yeah. Shout out to I think Attorney James Walker Jr. We definitely want to take you up on the invitations. Oh yeah. yeah. We are definitely taking you up on the invitation. So we're there. Opening night. Wait, when is opening night? He said this week? Yeah, I think he said Hell's Kitchen was next week. Yeah. Oh, I can do next week. This week, I was like, ooh. Okay. Next week, I can do it. We're there. All right. So that's this week. Thank you for everybody that joined in. You know, we're going to wrap this thing up and um, follow me at ain'tsaint.cj on Instagram. And that's it. Sheldon, where can they follow you? I am Sheldon G. Horton everywhere. And also look at this name, Metro Man of Atlanta, because we are coming to a stream near you. That's right. Quarantine. And of course, it's, of course, in style Atlanta first, the letter N style Atlanta. And my Instagram is at it's Carmen Simmons. Right. And everybody loves Carmen. <laughs> I just love the fact that her attorney just decided to put her little family business out there because then we're just okay. Okay, but I caught that several what? times, baby. I was like, I don't, I don't know what what type of time Aoki was on, but I agree that sixty five year old man was that was just too much. That was too much. Aoki it was too much. Oh, yeah, because so they breaking her down over that shit. Daddy, if he did not give her a bump in her allowance, she was going to file. She was going to get a sugar daddy. That's just what she said. That's exactly what she found. Listen, listen. You should have just <laughs> gave her that bump. She <laughs> gave her an increase. She wanted an increase. <laughs> I, bet after that, I bet after that, Russell was like, so check your account. Right. Yeah. Yes, I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. All right. I doubt it. Yeah. I, they broke up real quick. Okay. They did. They did. She's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I was like, at the end of the day, it ain't no different than her mama and her daddy. She get it from her mama. Okay. I'm gonna say, baby, on a <laughs> mama on a hood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, daddy, she know what she <laughs> doing. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in to Instant News Break. Make sure you follow us at InstallAtlanta.com on all social media platforms. And this is a wrap. Roll the tape. Thank y'all. Good night. Good night. Your call has been forwarded to your mute number. Who is Tracy? The live Why are we still live? It should have been ended by y'all. <laughs> right, that's what I thought too. I thought the, the what's name was about to come up, the promo. Yeah, but listen, I'm finna.